This program is sponsored by Kerr McGee and the Oklahoma City Centennial Sponsors. The Oklahoma Centennial Spectacular is a special project of the Oklahoma Centennial Commission. Celebrate Oklahoma, a unique history, an extraordinary future. Ford Center in the capital city. Come celebrate a century. A century of courage. A century of inspiration. A century of creativity. A century of achievement. And a century of pride. Tonight, come celebrate with us as we salute 100 years of statehood. It's the State of Oklahoma Centennial Celebration Spectacular. And now, with more Grammy Awards than any other country artist in history, ladies and gentlemen, Oklahoma City native, Vince Gill. Centennial Spectacular, celebrating 100 years of Oklahoma statehood. 
with Reba McIntyre, Vince Gill, Governor Brad Henry, the Oklahoma City University American Spirit Dance Company, Bill Miller, Rance Howard, Bobby Mercer, Mary Switzer, The Flaming Lips, Mark Connor, Nadia Komanich, Amy Grant, Shirley Jones, Terry Underwood, Willard Scott, Jimmy Webb, Blake Shelton, Garth Brooks, Argus Hamilton, the Canterbury Coral Society, Leona Mitchell, Johnny Bench, Miss Patty Page, the All-American Rejects, former Miss Americas, Jane Jerome, Susan Powell, Chantel smith Wirch, Jennifer Berry Gooden, Miss America 2007, Lauren Nelson, the Oklahoma Centennial All-Star Marching Band, Toby Keith, and under the direction of maestro Joel Levine, the Oklahoma City Philharmonic. Now, please welcome to tonight's historic statehood milestone, Elk City's Broadway leading lady, Kelly O'Hara. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here tonight, celebrating the day we became the 46th state in the union. <laughs> now I know Oklahoma knows how to throw a celebration. And Oklahoma Centennial is one of those events you can't put into a single day. And as a matter of fact, I can't even fit it into this room. There's a whole lot of folks watching it from the ballpark over the street. Everybody say hello. And apparently we have to celebrate in all sorts of different ways, like, like that wild maze, uh, corn maze in the shape of the Centennial logo out in Hydro. That was pretty cool. The excavation of that 1957 Plymouth that was buried in Tulsa during the semi-Centennial. <laughs> there were Indian ground blessings, a dedication of a huge stamp, rocket men flew at the Rose Bowl, and the good people of Medford dedicated their Centennial clock in a blinding snowstorm. Now that's a Centennial pride, I would say. Wouldn't you? <laughs> now, when they asked me to be a part of this and a part of all these wonderful people, it seemed a little intimidating. <laughs> I am so happy to be here and so honored. I thought I'd be a little nervous, though, to, to be able to do it justice. I mean, come on, this is a, a once in a statehood celebration and a landmark event, any, like, un unlike anything ever. And um, it is intimidating, especially with all you wonderful people. For this little piece of heaven called Oklahoma, there needs to be a birthday celebration, rock and roll rave meets rock and roll, and, and it needs to start with a bang. So I am going to need your help to make my number a bang. Will you help me out, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. When you're a whole state and it's time to celebrate, it's got to be really something special. So don't let me down. I mean, 100 years. How can you celebrate a century? How, Brian? <laughs> To celebrate a state as great as this one By enumerating things you surely know Would serve as fit and proper recognition But what a boring way to start the show I say we must forgo the old familiar And take the Oklahoma road less true and toot the horns of unsung folks we're proud to call our own the amazing and the awesome and yes even the odd In 1889, the land rush must have been great fun Cause the Sooners couldn't wait till noon They up and jumped the gun With 15,000 people running fast to claim their space There it was, before TV The first amazing race Nowhere else but Oklahoma Nowhere else but here Settled by the faster folk The finish line Oh, God. 
in 25 was held to choose the flag. A winner would for certain have a lifetime right to brag. The best design brought Mrs. Fluke her shining hour of fame, Louise Funk Fluke. I kid you not, that really was her name. Nowhere else but Oklahoma, nowhere else but here. Despite her funky. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of Oklahoma, the Honorable Brad Henry. Hello, and welcome to the Oklahoma Centennial Spectacular. I'm so glad to see all of you here on this historic night. At no time in our state's history, have so many big names come together in one place. 
This really is a once in a century event. This is a celebration of everything great about Oklahoma. There is so much to love about our wonderful state. But most of all, this is a celebration about the people of Oklahoma. Cities, cities and towns across the state have held centennial events, and everyone has had the opportunity to celebrate our 100th birthday with friends and family. Oklahomans are, without a doubt, the greatest people on Earth. <laughs> All of you here tonight and all of your fellow Oklahomans watching represent everything I so dearly love about the Sooner State. Being here tonight surrounded by friends and family and treated to the best entertainment anywhere, I can honestly say I've never been more proud to be an Oklahoman. So enjoy the show and God bless you and God bless Oklahoma. Yesterday's recipient of the National Medal of Arts, N. Scott Mamaday. Good evening. I'm Scott Mamaday, a member of the Kiowa Nation and the Centennial Poet Laureate of Oklahoma. I'm very pleased and proud to join you in celebrating the 100th anniversary of Oklahoma statehood. But there is a history of Oklahoma before the rush of statehood a tumultuous chapter in the timeline of mankind that accrues to Oklahoma's character and definition and sets it apart from other states of the Union, touching our culture, our mystique, our history, and our hearts.
Ladies and gentlemen, film and television star from Duncan, please welcome Rance Howard. Good evening, folks. When Lee Allen Smith invited my wife Judy and me to this celebration, I accepted because I was, it was giving me a chance to stand up and publicly say, thank you, Oklahoma. You see, folks, I owe Oklahoma for being who I am today. I was born on a stock farm up in Kay County, Oklahoma. And that's where I learned to work hard and sweat. My mama taught me to ride. My dad taught me to plow. He was raising a farm boy, but my mama was raising a cowboy. In a little one-room country school, an angel of a teacher motivated my thirst for learning and for acting. And I took that thirst with me to Scheidler High. And <laughs> just before graduation, the principal asked me to enroll in the drama school at the University of Oklahoma. You see, I had been telling everyone that after graduation, I was going to ride my horse out to Hollywood and become a movie star cowboy. Well, the OU Drama School prepared me to meet the challenges facing a young wannabe actor in New York City. When my late wife, Jean Spiegel Howard, an Oklahoma girl born and raised in Duncan, and I uh, we're settled into show business and raising our two sons out in California. My dad came to visit, and I told him how much I appreciated my upbringing and the many positive, down-to-earth, Oklahoma kind of qualities that he and Mama had instilled in me. And I wanted to do something to thank him. 
And he said, uh, well, if you could find some way to pass along some of those fine Oklahoma qualities to your two boys, Ron and Clint, that'd be thanks enough for me. So now, folks, I would like to introduce you to the result of that long-ago conversation. Our oldest and meanest son, Ron Howard. Hi, I'm Ron Howard. I'm sorry I can't be there in person to help the great state of Oklahoma celebrate its centennial. Uh, I claim Oklahoma because I was born there, although I never lived there permanently. There's something very special about that region. And, uh, and the people who, who come from that area and live there. And I've always been, been proud to feel a part of that. I think it's, it's influenced me in a lot of positive ways. My father and mother from Oklahoma, I, my dad is there tonight, and um, I wish I could be too. As you know, the one opportunity that I had to, uh, to really bring to life the feeling of the heritage of the state was in the Oklahoma land race sequence of Far and Away. It was an extraordinary day filming that, and as is what you're experiencing tonight. And again, I wish I could be there, but enjoy yourselves and congratulations. When Ron was getting ready to film that sequence, the Cherokee Strip Land Race, uh, I have a good part in the movie and I was supposed to ride in the race. And I was very excited about that. A little while before it, was start, before it started, he came to me and he said, uh, Dad, uh, I've been talking with the stunt coordinator and the head wrangler, and they think it would be too dangerous for you to ride in the race, so we're gonna put a stunt man in to ride in your place. <laughs> well, uh, I looked at him and I said, you know, Ron, both of my grandfathers rode in that race and nothing happened to them. <laughs> and I said, I'm a better rider than either one of them ever was, and, and you are the boss and I'll do what you say, but I sure would like to ride in that race. And he looked at me for a couple of seconds and he said, Dad, Go get your horse. <laughs> Happy birthday, Oklahoma! A college football Hall of Famer, Jim Thorpe Lifetime Achievement Award winner, three national championships, and one Super Bowl. It could only be the King, Barry Switzer. to Lee Allen Smith, thank you for what you do for all of us. Since our first show at the Blue Note in Norman way back when, and for the best part of the last 20 years, this Oklahoma Next Team is a group and has been a juggernaut in the music industry. World-renowned for their outrageous live performances, new audiences everywhere have been converted rapidly by their award-winning sound. Here they are, the multi-Grammy Award winners, the Flaming Lips!
It's hard to make the good things last. You realize the sun don't go down. It's just an illusion caused by the world. tell you wasn't pretty. Yeah, there it is again! <laughs> By the way, every room in the boat is under video surveillance. I took a look at the tape and nothing happened between you guys. Just the occasional gas and some soft weeping. Woo, there's a lot of caffeine in a Red Bull. See ya! <laughs> Happy birthday, Oklahoma. I wish I could be there. Hey, you know, one thing I love about Oklahoma is you guys are so old. It makes me feel young. So thanks for that. Happy birthday! He's America's most decorated male gymnast. She scored the first perfect 10 in Summer Olympic Games history. Ladies and gentlemen, from Norman, please welcome Bart Connor and Nadia Komanich. Wow, what a night. Thank you very much. You know, Nadia and I met at Madison Square Garden in New York. She was 14, and I turned 18 on that day. We both won the competition that day. And we were standing there together for a winner's photo, and a photographer from the New York Times said, you know, she's kind of cute. Why don't you lean over and, you know, give her a little kiss on the cheek that'd make a nice picture? <laughs> yes. How could I resist? Well, then, three months later, of course, Nadia went on to dominate the 1976 Olympics. And you didn't. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for reminding everyone tonight. Anyway, so the world remembered her, but she didn't exactly remember me. But lucky for me, our paths crossed again, and now I am an Oklahoman. And we have our newest Oklahoman, Dylan Paul Connor, who is with his grandpa tonight. Grandpa Harold Connor was born in Locust Grove, Oklahoma. Tonight they're having their own centennial celebration in Norman. There he is. Now, just like Nadia, our next artist also married into our collective Oklahoma family, and we are so glad she did. She put contemporary Christian music on the map, and in the process, has become one of the most celebrated artists in pop music today. Here she is, the multi-Grammy Dove and CCM Award winner, Amy, Amy Grant. Grant.
this year, I had the pleasure of playing Laurie in the official centennial production of Oklahoma right down the street at the Civic Center Music Hall. <laughs> it was so thrilling to play to packed houses every night and to an audience of folks like myself who have a passion for the show's namesake. Oklahoma, the Broadway musical may have made America sing, but it was the 1955 movie that made the world fall in love with Oklahoma. A musical phenomenon, a motion picture landmark, a tradition, a triumph. Come to an extraordinary land of music and memories, excitement, adventure, and love. Come home to Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the two-time Academy Award-winning musical, Oklahoma. The best love songs of Rodgers and Hammerstein bring to life the exuberant triumph of the American spirit. Oklahoma, as it was meant to be seen, heard, and experienced in 70 millimeter six-channel stereophonic sound. The land we belong to is Oklahoma, and the grand event is back. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. rated G, general audiences. I tell you, that gets me a little emotional. It's, that movie is the reason I do what I do. <laughs> anyway. The night of the movie premiere was amazing. A parade of French Surreys led by then Oklahoma Governor Raymond Gary. He led the procession from the St. James Theater, where the stage version of Oklahoma had opened 12 years earlier, and incidentally, where I made my Broadway debut right next door 60 years later. Uh, the processional traveled to the Rivoli Theater for the historic film premiere. There, standing atop of a carpet of transplanted Oklahoma red soil, Governor Gary helped raise the Oklahoma state flag from the theater staff and officially proclaimed the Rivoli to be Oklahoma territory. Oklahoma is the only American musical that has won the Pulitzer, the Grammy, and the Tony honors. It was made into a full-length original cast album. It is the first musical honored on a U.S. postage stamp. And Oklahoma remains still the only Broadway musical in history whose title song has been adapted as the state song. Thank you, Governor Nye, for that. <laughs> and now, it is my incredible honor to introduce to you one of my personal musical theater inspirations and someone who has left her notes ringing in the hearts of every Oklahoman. Academy Award-winning actress, singer, and honorary Oklahoman, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shirley Jones.
Thank you so very, very much. Wow. You know, I was, I was only 18 years old, less than that, when I stumbled onto Richard Rogers at my very, very first professional Broadway audition, who asked me to sing for his partner, um, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Hammer something. You understand, I barely knew who these two men were, who then both asked me to fly to Hollywood to test for the movie version of the big Broadway hit they had, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. It was the first time an actual book story was ever set to music on Broadway. And everybody who was anybody wanted to play Laurie. My friend Debbie Reynolds and Catherine Grayson and Doris Day and Jane Powell. But Mr. Hammer something still wanted that unknown little girl from Smithton, Pennsylvania, population 833. Hi, Pennsylvania. And so it was Gordon McRae, Jean Nelson, Gloria Graham, Rod Steiger, James Whitmore, Eddie Albert, Charlotte Greenwood, and introducing who? Shirley Mae Jones. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I'm not coming home. I'm staying in Hollywood. Send my good shoes. I got Oklahoma. I got Oklahoma.
I am so proud. I'm so very proud of this next young lady. The list of awards this 24-year-old Oklahoman has racked up in the last three years is unreal. Grammys, AMAs, CMAs, ACMs. And as of last week, she is two-time CMA Female Vocalist of the Year. She was even named Oklahoman of the Year in 2006. She encompasses all that makes this state so great, and she has the character and humility to match. Here she is from Chicota, Oklahoma, Carrie Underwood! Everybody's celebrating. There's lots to see. 
parades and pretty girls during the day, and at night, fireworks, plays, and pageants. And here, recreated, is the famous Land Rush of 1889. Surely some of these men and women can actually remember that great day back in 1907 when President Teddy Roosevelt addressed a proud population after officially signing the document which brought Oklahoma into the Union. Oklahoma today, 50 years old? No, 50 years young. A state that looks ahead to a rich and rewarding future. Happy birthday to Oklahoma. Making mornings brighter for millions of viewers, especially those 100th birthday celebrating centenarians. Ladies and gentlemen, here to celebrate our century with us tonight, the ubulant Willard Scott. Oklahoma, where the wind. Let me tell you something. I have worked for the last four years, and I'm going to say it. Ulaga. <laughs> and Will Rogers said that he put the, the, the museum in Claremore because nobody could say Ugala. So we're in business. I can't thank you all enough for inviting me to be here and be a part of this activity. And I used to say John Wayne had a wonderful birthday toast. He used to say, I hope you live forever and mine is the last voice you hear. And that's how I feel about the great state of Oklahoma. And one little paraphrase, good old Will. Everybody loved Will. He, got it. he didn't have to worry about a writer's strike. He just read the newspaper and got all of his stories from the newspaper. But to paraphrase him, I never met anybody from Oklahoma that I didn't like. And I know, I know he meant it. Well, you know, this morning I had truly one of the most wonderful experiences in my career. I have met an awful lot of folks who've turned 100. I've gotten letters from them. One of the great letters, I got a lady in Alabama, didn't need glasses, read the newspaper every day. She said that read the paper to find out who'd been hatched, who'd been matched, and who'd been dispatched. So that <laughs> we had, and I think we have a, a Guinness Book of World Records record, in one room at the museum, we had 25 centenarians, 2,500 years of Oklahoma living. And yes. It really was inspiring, and I'm telling you, I, I won't go on about that. I got to read my script. Should I use the prompter or my glasses? Do you care? You don't care whether I read this or not? You won't see seeing me. You're going to be seeing this on the screen, the people, the faces of some of these folks who are 100. So I don't know. I'll just, I may try it both ways. I'll read the prompter sometime, and sometime I'll read my glasses. Bring home a quarter belt, and don't forget to pick up some chicken fried, oh, I got the wrong list. Chicken fried steak here, good old barbecue here. All right, let's get the show on the road. It must be something in that red earth. I'm not reading this, I'm ad living. There's no prompter up there. It, maybe it's in the water, but you know what I think it is? I think it's in the people. I think it is the spirit of Oklahoma that helps these people live to be 100. You know you can will yourself almost any way you want to in this world. All right, let's get on with the part that's a very important part. Tulsa, did you know this? I didn't know this. Tulsa is the home of the largest number of Oklahoma centenarians. Otis Clark credits giving up the sporting life <laughs> back in 23, the year 1923, for his ability to travel in good health all over the world and have fun and he was fantastic. Happy birthday. Ming Chung, born in Korea, became a U.S. citizen at the age of 92, and she's also now 104. Take a look at Margaret Moran. 
still full of smiles at 101, and uh, Nora Simmons recommended that we eat good things, like chicken fried steak, I might guess, and you'll live to be 100 like she has. This year, my dear friends, Forrest Winston turns the same age as our great state, 100. Alan Cox, take a look at Big Alan up there. Get this little moral issue for the folks. Alan Cox says he never smoked, he never got drunk, and he never ran around with women. And he's been around for 102 years. Actually, he's 28. It seems like 102 years. I had lived that. That wasn't on the prompter. I just threw that. <laughs> Take a look at Margaret Richmond, 102. Loves dark chocolate. Tells me sometimes the only thing she'll eat. I do. I do love chocolate. Now, let me get this right. Harold Cooney of Blackwell is 100 this year, and he advises us all to be good citizens, and if you get elected to do something, do it. How about that? That would be unusual, wouldn't it? I used to be Bozo the Clown, did you know that? And I was Ronald McDonald. I was the first Ronald McDonald. And I, I had to quit my job because I was in Washington, D.C., and the professionals ran me out of the clown business, and consequently I had to go straight. But here we are, still working. Ida Lewis Turner is a youthful person at 101, and she resides in Oklahoma City, just down the way from the fantastic, enchanting Alice Everett, who's 104 as of November the 10th of this year. Oklahoma friend Olin Kenneth Campbell was born in 1904. That same year, Beulah Mae Winter came into this world in Edmond. Happy birthday. Blanche Loman of Grant was born in 1898. She's one of the few to see three centuries, lived in three centuries, and she claims she's done so by sticking to three rules. Be honest, go to church, and pay your bills. Now remember that. American Express is her writer. We have <laughs> Hattie Payne was born that same year, the oldest of 19 children and a World War I widow. She lives right now in Stratford, and what fabulous story she must have to tell. In Elk City, there's a handsome fellow, good-looking fellow named Jack Knight, a true knight of the round table, born in 1905. And Eunice, and Rayford of Valiant, still looks up to her older brother, DeWitt Blackford, who also turned 104 in May. Two in the same family. People, what's the secret to living like that? It's in the genes, folks. We'll go to a computer in a few years, plug in at Sears, get new spleens and kidneys and whatever else we need. I bet we got more knees in here now than they do in a prayer book in Rome. Have you all? How many knees and hips? Do we have any knees and hips in here? I'll take two knees, one knee. Give me a knee, knee, knee. Two knees, a hip, a hip. Give me a hip replacement. Two knees and two hips. Two hips old. But the man with a half a brain over here. Ardmore, Gladys Owens. Remember Abby Normal and Frankenstein? <laughs> Gladys Owens lives in Ardmore, Oklahoma, and she's an active, yeah, hallelujah. She's an active hundred years young. Out in Enid, where I conducted the Enid Symphony Orchestra once, and they never forgot that. I've never been invited back. I never get invited back twice anywhere. Anyway, we wish her a happy birthday. And right now, my dear friends, Melvin Eckert is celebrating a birthday in town. A spry 101, also born in 1906. Ruby Brewer of Rush Springs carries herself with great dignity and respect and elegance. Beautiful lady. Broken Arrow's own Sarah Cooper was born January 24th in 1907 and has always gotten a kick out of telling folks that she's older <laughs> than the state of Oklahoma. One of 17 children, his father worked nights, <clears throat> Thomas J. Brown of Oak Mulgee. Did I say that right, Oak Mulgee? I haven't blown anything yet, bless your heart. Gives credit for his long, healthy life to the good Lord and to farm living. I share that. I am a, believe it or not, I'm a half a farmer myself. Right old Black Angus and Belted Galloway. Ever seen Belted Galloway's an Oreo cookie? That's a white, you don't care about that, do you? Anyway, <laughs> at 101, and uh, 
We have John and Helen Gower of Ponca City. They've had a long, wonderful life, and they've been married. I don't know how many years. Doesn't say here. Must be 70 or 75. And they were asked, would you get married again to the same each other, one another? And they said, yes, 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 three times. How about that? True love goes on and on. And the oldest living Oklahoman and happy because I got to tell you a story. I was in New Zealand. We don't know who the oldest living Oklahoman. I asked a guy in New Zealand once. I said, have you lived here all your life? He said, not yet. So we can't honestly say this is, the, who knows? Anyway, many happy returns. This is from Alva, Oklahoma, lovely. There you go. Checks in the mail. We have Christine Brown. She celebrated her 110th birthday. Whew. September 207, 2007. And she says what she's learned over the years, this is beautiful. Friendships are more important than anything else. It's real friends that truly matter. And I couldn't agree with that anymore. Salt of the red earth, these folks can honestly say that they have not only witnessed history, but they have been a part of it. And my dear friends, you are in for a treat right now. I know the man personally, we've gotten to be good friends with the family. You are in for one kind of treat, and he's going to do something and sing something that you probably never heard of in your life and never knew existed. We all know Oklahoma is a song, probably the most popular state song in the whole United States, sung lyrics known all the way from Tibet to South Africa, all the way up to the North Pole, all over the world, oh, Oklahoma. Everybody knows the fabulous show song, Oklahoma. Our friend here was born March 6, 1906, before statehood. He was here from the very beginning. His name is Melvin Welch, and he's a wonderful, good citizen of Helena. Did I say that right? Helena. And you're about to meet him right now, a proud Oklahoman who's going to sing the song that was the state song of Oklahoma before Rodgers and Hammerstein hit theirs. At 101, singing our original state song entitled, Oklahoma, a toast. Please welcome Melvin Welch. said last night when I heard him rehearse, that was going to knock the ball right out of the park. I mean, their spirit, talk about Oklahoma love, heart, and spirit. He's got it all. And I mean, I, I got crying back there. I'd never heard that song in my life before. Have you? How many of you have ever heard that song? Did you know it existed? You did? You don't even look to be a hundred. 
I'll send you a case of Smuckers anyway. Hey, listen, eat that Smuckers. It doesn't hurt. It may not make you live to be 100, but it won't kill you. Put it that way. <laughs> Catchy little ditty, it says here, and it was that. Made even more so by Melvin. Okay, now let me see what else I got. One more thing. We need to thank, and this is a very sincere thank you, not just from the card or the teleprompter, MJ Alexander for her beautiful photographs. Absolutely precious and priceless. And thank you so much to all of you. I'm not only proud to be an American, and God bless America, God bless Sunday School, God bless all that you stand for and believe in, and thank you. Invite me back, and I'll treat you all to some good old chicken fried steak over at Annie's next week. Thank you. It was worth coming home to hear Melvin sing. I love that. Well, this, uh, this guy I'm about to introduce, there are very few musicians and songwriters that will come along in our lifetime that are as amazingly talented as this guy from Oklahoma. He's been compared to the greats like Gershwin, Porter, Bacharach, and McCartney. That's Paul. <laughs> and uh, the list of, hits, of his hit songs uh, that he's written have been amazing. They're all standards. He's still the only person to have ever received a Grammy Award in all three categories of music, lyrics, and orchestration. Born in Elk City, raised in Laverne, nothing less than genius, Mr. Jimmy Webb. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. She'll find the note that I left hanging on her door. She'll laugh when she reads the part that says I'm leaving. Cause I've left that girl Oh, too many times Before By the time I make Albuquerque She'll be working She'll probably stop at lunch She'll try to give me a but she'll just hear that phone Keep on ringing Off the wall That is all Time I make Oklahoma She'll be sleeping She'll turn softly and she'll call She'll call my name out low oh, She will cry Just to think I'd really leave her I've tried to tell that woman so She just didn't know I would really go I tried to tell her so Yes, I did
Thank you. I can't believe it, but I guess I hit the big time finally. <laughs> this must be it. Uh, Wichita Lineman is, is actually written about the uh, incomparable prairie lands of northwestern Oklahoma, but uh, I had to use Wichita Lineman because Panhandle Lineman just <laughs> doesn't sound quite right. After hearing uh, Nashville's new phenomenon sing it, I, I'm sure Wichita Lineman is in very good hands for the foreseeable future. Uh, born in Ada, Oklahoma, please welcome my new buddy, Blake Shelton. country music legend, the one and only Garth Brooks. It was on April 19, 1995, around 9.02 a.m., just after parents had dropped their children off at a daycare. 
at the Murrah Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City, the unthinkable happened. But from across the dark abyss of pain and grief where the Murrah Building once stood, now has come a light, a reflection of hope, a powerful illumination cast off by a people of boundless spirit and relentless resolve. So tonight, let us honor the memory of those who died, those who survived, and those whose lives were changed forever. We honor those victims tonight by looking to the future. We honor them by living lives of joy, of meaning, of love and fulfillment, the lives that they would want us to lead. By the grace of God, Oklahomans conquered evil with good. We conquered despair with hope, and we will continue to build a better state. Here to honor those Oklahomans so untimely taken from us, it is my pleasure, it is my honor to introduce once again the incomparable Miss Reba McIntyre.
Hello, everybody. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Will Rogers. Which one's Mr. Rogers? The one chewing gum. Mr. Rogers. I hear somebody mention my name. You're just the man I'm looking for. Go dig it. That's great. No wonder they made you ambassador. The next morning, after an election, People don't come around and say, did you conduct a clean and dignified campaign? No, sir. They just come around and say, boy, did you win. That's politics in a nutshell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Will Rogers of the Baby Boom and the funniest topical comedian in America. From Oklahoma City, Argus Hamilton. Thank you, and happy birthday, Oklahoma. At a New York City banquet back in the 1920s, Will Rogers was introducing the great playwright and social critic George Bernard Shaw. Will said, Mr. Shaw and I have a lot in common. We both realize the world is cuckoo, and neither one of us knows how to fix it. However, we're both willing to try at a nickel a word. <laughs> Will Rogers was America's greatest gift to America. And during his life, Will Rogers was America's greatest gift to the world. In the 72 years since his death, Will Rogers has been praised as a great philosopher, a great statesman, a great social observer of the American stage. But people forget what put Will Rogers on the world stage in the first place. The fact that Will Rogers was first and foremost a great stand-up comedian. I know a lot of you wondering, say, what is he doing there tonight? What is he doing? Well, I, they wanted, they looked all over the country and they wanted one Protestant here. That is what I <laughs> No, that's, that's just one of my bum jokes. You'd be surprised at the amount of Protestants scattered around here. In fact, in fact, a lot of the football players are all that. No, don't get the idea. A lot of you people that are not familiar with this wonderful institution that it's all, that it's all a, a uh, one denomination. Quite a few Protestants go here. In fact, the line, always the line, the line in the football team. They have to do the dirty work so they can <laughs> Will Rogers was born in Indian Territory on November 4th, 1879. Will grew up as the son of a prosperous cattle rancher and banker, Clem Rogers, in Cherokee country. Will was one-eighth Cherokee, thanks to his mother and a paternal grandmother. Will was a good-natured prankster. The baby boy was a spoil by all his older sisters and his indulgent father. Will loved to crack jokes, sing all the latest songs at the piano, court all the girls, twirl his rope, and wear all the latest clothes from Kansas City. Fifty years later, when Rodgers and Hammerstein were writing the musical Oklahoma, they based the character Will Parker on young Will Rogers. Will accompanied a boatload of steers to Cape Town, South Africa in 1901, where Will was cleaning out a cattle pen one afternoon when he got a better offer. Will joined Texas Jack's Wild West show and quickly became the star attraction as a trick roper and a champion rider. A few years later, Will was starring on the vaudeville stage across America, where he did a roping act with a horse and rider and worked five shows a day and night. Meanwhile, Will Rogers roped the catch of his life when he convinced the beautiful Betty Blake of Arkansas to marry him in 1908 after eight years of begging. Will took Betty's suggestion that he begin talking on the vaudeville stage, and the audiences loved him. By 1912, Will Rogers was playing the palace in New York City, the very top of the line. He soon was recruited into the biggest show in America, the Ziegfeld Follies, where Will performed stand-up comedy every night with other great comedians. W.C. Fields, Eddie Cantor, Fanny Bryce, 
as they fill the time between Ziegfeld's specialty, the world's most beautiful women performing elaborate song and dance numbers in scanty little outfits staged to look like art. Will began joking about the national news at the Ziegfeld Follies, again at his wife Betty's insistence. He began to be quoted in newspapers across the country. Will had arrived on the national stage at age 36. Will signed a deal to do silent pictures in Hollywood shortly thereafter and bought a home across the street from the Beverly Hills Hotel. In 1927, Will Rogers invented one of today's entertainment staples, the Daily Monologue, by cabling a few jokes from London to the New York Times. Within weeks, it was a daily feature and syndicated nationwide. His fame grew. Will never missed one day of this column. That year, President Coolidge sent Will with Charles Lindbergh to Mexico to help prevent a war after Mexico seized U.S. oil refineries. Will also, that year, raised millions of dollars for the Red Cross to help black flood victims of the great Mississippi River flood that year. Will was then also, that year, named Mayor of Beverly Hills as his star shot across the sky just as radio arrived and motion pictures turned talkies. The two new mediums transformed Will Rogers from a nationwide star to a national monument. Will began broadcasting a weekly monologue on NBC Radio sponsored by Gulf Radio in Los Angeles, just as his movie career took off at Fox Studios. Will's movie persona was gentler than his stand-up comedy personality, and the movie camera picked right up on his gentle humanity as well as his razor-sharp wit. But you are an American citizen. Well, I think I am. Folks, Indian, both my mother and father had Cherokee and blood, you know, born and raised in Indian territory. Of course, I'm not these Americans whose ancestors come over on the Mayflower, but uh, we met them at the boat when they landed. And it's always been to the everlasting discredit of the Indian race that we ever let them land. Will Rogers must have mentioned Oklahoma in every fifth joke he told. Will was number one at the Hollywood box office for five consecutive years by the early 30s. Will was hosting the Academy Awards banquets every spring. Will was on top of the show business world. Will Rogers was so popular that by 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt asked Will to introduce him to 80,000 Democrats at the Los Angeles Coliseum to kick off FDR's presidential campaign. A lifetime Southern Democrat, like everyone else in Oklahoma at the time, FDR worried that Will might have presidential aspirations. But as columnist Westbrook Pegler assured Roosevelt, Will would never accept the pay cut. <laughs> Will's wanderlust was a driving force in his life, however. And in 1935, Will decided to take a plane trip with fellow Oklahoman Wiley Post to Alaska and to the Far East. Will said he wanted to gather more material for his lecture tours and his radio monologues, but Will just loved to travel. On August 15th, 1935, the plane stopped in Alaska to ask some Eskimos for directions to Fairbanks. When the plane took off, it sputtered a few hundred feet up, the engine went out, and the plane went straight down into the Alaskan tundra. President Roosevelt told a stunned and saddened nation the next day that a smile has been lost on the face of America. Will's body was flown to Oklahoma, in Chelsea as a matter of fact, for a nationally broadcast funeral on NBC radio. The funeral was officiated by his lifetime friend going back to his days at Skerritt Methodist School in Indian Territory. That friend being my grandfather, Reverend Argus James Hamilton Sr. 
Will Rogers was a great American, a great comedian, and an example for all of us Oklahomans in show business to emulate. Will Rogers typified the great people, the solid values, and the side-splitting sense of humor that Oklahoma has enjoyed since territorial days. For those of us on stage here tonight, Will Rogers proved that wherever Oklahomans go, Oklahoma goes with him. He was 19 years old when he took the big leagues by storm. New York Yankees great and Oklahoma legend, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Mercer. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so happy to be here on Oklahoma's 100th birthday. I was born right here in this great city, Oklahoma City. And thank you. And I can tell you that I am very proud to tell everybody that when I travel throughout the United States that I'm from Oklahoma. I want them to know that I'm from Oklahoma. Thank you, Lee Allen, for allowing me to be a part of this celebration tonight. I'm so honored to be up here tonight to introduce to you another fellow Oklahoman that has shared her Sooner State talent with the world. She began singing at an early age in the choir of the Antioch Pentecostal Church and graduated from Oklahoma City University. From those stalwart beginnings, she is now known worldwide as one of the greatest opera sopranos Ladies and gentlemen, here performing with the men's chorus of the Canterbury Choral Society, Enid's internationally acclaimed metropolitan opera star, Leona Mitchell.
of Famer and American baseball legend. From Binger, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Bench. Thank you. There's been so many great Oklahomans in our lives. One man I'd like to mention real quick. I signed in 1965, I was in the Major Leagues when I was 19. I was MVP in 1970, and I came back and Barry Switzer was in the room when Abe Lemons was there. I was there for the sports banquet, and he came up to me and he said, son, you just don't get it, do you? He said, you could have come here to Oklahoma City University, played basketball, got you an education, and you could have been coach at Godibo right now. Thank you, Abe, for being part of Oklahoma, and I'm so happy to be a part of that. That night in Riverfront Stadium was a great experience. But I tell you, I have never been more proud than when I was honored right here in this state at the new ballpark. I've made a lot of pigeons happy, haven't I? Uh, so thank you for that. Our next Oklahoman here to pay homage to our part of the Mother Road is a singer whose career has stretched longer than that of the fabled highway. Born right here in Claremore with over 100 million records sold, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the singing rage, Miss Patty Page. sang at the 50th. I was dancing with my darling to the chin of sea walls when an old friend I happened to see introduced her to my loved one Just how much I have lost Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee Waltz <laughs> Missouri, Oklahoma. 
Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City. And it looks mighty, mighty pretty. Gallup, New Mexico. Blackstaff, Arizona. Don't forget Winona. Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Won't you get hip to this kind of trip? Take that California trip. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. This is a special announcement from the Oklahoma Weather Center. We go now live to your weatherman. Hello, Oklahoma. I'm News 9 Chief Meteorologist Jerry England. Well, it looks like a big one, folks. We all know. Hi, I'm Fox 25's Chief Meteorologist Scott Pageant, and we're in fall right now. We always look towards winter where we have some storms, and we all know yep. Oklahoma weather. It looks is like the big one, folks, and we all know Oklahoma's weather is powerful and at times unpredictable. And as you can see right here. Hello, I'm Frank Mitchell, Chief Meteorologist here at News Channel 8 in Tulsa. Well, everybody knows Oklahoma weather is unpredictable and powerful. And now there's a new force of nature on the horizon, a musical force. Hi, I'm meteorologist Ross Dixon. From OETA. A lot of thunderstorm activity continues across the state, and we have a thunderstorm of entertainment on tap for you. Yep, it looks like a big one, folks. Oklahoma weather, both powerful and unpredictable. And as you can see here, we've got a storm brewing, but get ready. Here comes a musical force of Mother Nature. I'm Channel 2 Chief Meteorologist Dan Threlkel. Folks, this could be the big one. A powerful musical force of nature. Ladies and gentlemen, from Stillwater, Oklahoma, the All American Rejects.
domain is all America. Ahead of you stretches that wonderful runway. Please go out and meet the people who love you, your subjects, Miss America. The first runner-up is Charlene Dallas of California. Miss America is Susan Powell, Miss Oklahoma! The winner of a $30,000 scholarship is Miss Oregon, Emily Orton. And Miss Oklahoma, Sean is Miss America 1996. Miss America 2006 is Miss Oklahoma, Jennifer Berry. Ladies and gentlemen, your Oklahoma Miss Americas. From Laverne, Miss America 1967, Jane Giroux. From Elk City, Miss America 1981, Susan Powell. From Muldrow, Miss America 1996, Chantel Smith Wirch. And from Tulsa, Miss America 2006, Jennifer Berry Gooden. Well, from all over the nation, Oklahoma's Miss Americas have come home for this great celebration. And we are so thrilled to be with you here tonight. Right, ladies? Absolutely. That's right. That's right. But it really seems like we're missing someone. Well, as a matter of fact, there is another Miss America from Oklahoma. Five feet, four inches tall, 118 pounds of smarts and beauty from my very own hometown, Miss Norma Smallwood. There she is. Norma was crowned Miss America of 1926. And did you all know that during the year of her reign, Miss America 1926, this little girl from Tulsa reportedly made over $100,000, more than either Babe Ruth or the President of the United States. <laughs> wow, well, I guess there was another babe that knew how to hit a home run. <laughs> you know, we're so proud of Norma and her Oklahoma legacy, 
and yet our buttons are nearly bursting for one more daughter of our great state. That's right. She is the current holder of the title that women all over America have aspired to embrace for over 80 years. Fellow Oklahomans, welcome home from Lawton, Oklahoma, your reigning 2007 Miss America, Lauren Nelson. Thank you all so very much. You know, I watched Miss America as a little girl since I was two years old, but never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be one of those girls on that stage, much less Miss America herself. Dreams really do come true. As Miss America, you have the opportunity to represent this great state of Oklahoma and country all over the world. But more than the honor of the title is the opportunity to use the crown to make a difference in the lives of others through charitable and community endeavors. And no opportunity is more gratifying than making that difference for the men and women of our U.S. military. Certainly the highlight of my year as Miss America was the opportunity to entertain our troops in Vietnam. In fact, we were the first Miss America group to ever visit a combat zone. It was such a blessing to be able to take a little piece of home to our friends, our brothers, our cousins, the men and women in the U.S. military. They had answered the call of our country to serve, and it was our proudest moment to honor them. This evening, we are honored to have soldiers from the Army National Guard and Fort Sill who have served in either Operation Iraqi Freedom or Operation Enduring Freedom. Oklahoma, let's give a big round of applause for these brave sons and daughters of Oklahoma. You know, no one can possibly understand the awesome sense of humility and honor it brings to any Miss America to know that there are people like these who have sworn their lives and fortunes in sacred honor for the United States. I know I speak for all proud Oklahomans when I say thank you for all you do and God bless you. Next, Oklahoma superstar is no stranger to soldiers. Always hitting the military bases wherever the action is. The multi-platinum recording star has performed more than 75 shows in Iraq alone during his annual USO tours for troops around the world. His continued support of forward deployed troops shows why he will continue to be the service member's choice for entertainer of the year. Here singing the unofficial military anthem, American Soldier, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Chubby P.
I'm just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son, be a lover to their mother, everything to everyone. Up and that on bright and early, I'm all business in my suit. Hey, I'm dressed up for success, my cover to my boots. I don't do it for the money, there's bills that I can't pay. I don't do it for the glory, I just do it anyway. Providing for our futures, my responsibility. And I'm a real good under pressure, being all that I can be. And I can't call in sick on Mondays when my weekend's been too strong. Hell, I work straight through our holidays, sometimes all night long. But you can bet that I'll stand ready when the wolf growls at the door. Cause I'm solid and I'm steady and I'm true down to the core. And I will always do my duty, no matter what the price. Hey, I've counted up the cost. I know the sacrifice. Oh, and I don't want to die for you. But if dying's asking me, I'll bear that cross with honor. Hey, freedom don't come free. Ladies and gentlemen, the First Lady of the United States, Laura Bush. Congratulations to Oklahomans on 100 years of statehood. Your frontier history is legendary, and Oklahoma's land runs, cattle drives, and early pioneers have inspired ballads, books, and a world-famous musical. Oklahoma is home to more American Indian tribes than any other state in the Union. Your state was the destination of our nation's largest voluntary in-migration of African Americans seeking freedom and equality. Today, others come to Oklahoma in pursuit of opportunity. Your rapidly growing Latino population and Asian American communities enrich your state's culture. 
from the strong men and women who forged new lives on America's frontier to the new immigrants who will shape Oklahoma's future. Your state has come to represent courage, tenacity, and hard work. President Bush and I salute you on your 100 years of accomplishments and wish Oklahoma the very best as you enter your next century. Well, they heard of a place. They heard of a place, a place where the cottonwood trees are innocent and the coyotes call as a lullaby. A place full of possibilities that reach as far as eyes can see and as far as dreams can carry. A land where hard work and willpower could transform a wilderness into home. And eight years later, a state. And just like those first Oklahomans who celebrated on that very first night of Oklahoma, we gather together tonight to affirm with the same pride and passion our love for this hallowed land we belong to. But we all know the true Oklahoma can't be found on a map. Oklahoma can only be found in the unlimited wealth of human spirit that lives in the hearts and minds of anyone who has ever stepped foot on the sacred crimson earth. That spirit is who we are. It's why we matter. It's what we care about. And it's what fuels our future. Just as it was on that first night a short century ago, it is still the precious lifetimes, the people of Oklahoma, that continue to be the brightest hope for this place we call home.
Centennial Spectacular is a special project of the Oklahoma Centennial Commission. Celebrate Oklahoma, a unique history, an extraordinary future.